Buddy, Black Ninja 797 here, and welcome back to another video, guys. In today's video, we're gonna be doing another Left 4 Dead 2 ranking video. And this Left 4 Dead 2 ranking video, I am very excited to share the fact that we're gonna be ranking all the mutations modes in Left 4 Dead. This is gonna be a lot of fun, guys. This has been a long time coming, and we already know about the hype train that I was trying to make from the last couple of weeks. And yeah, guys, I'm very excited because this has been, like, a fun series to make. I've enjoyed going back over the Mutations game modes and just playing them for fun and making videos on them and sharing my experiences with you guys. There were some old classics that we got to replay, and there was even some new ones that came out in the last stand, and I very much enjoyed that, and it looks like you guys did too, and that makes me happy. If you're happy, I am happy, my friends. And that's why I thought, why not end up ending the series on one last big hoorah by implementing an episode themed in our best series on our channel, which is going to be the ranking series so we're gonna be ranking guys all the left 4 dead 2 mutations from worst to best now before we do officially begin with the list though there is a couple of things that i had to modify on my rankings of these exactly because of the fact that mutations modes are finicky i wasn't necessarily planning on this happening but however though i should end up pointing it out just for the sake of the video so you guys know exactly how i am ranking these because i rank things slightly different i don't exactly have a strict formula because there's differences between like let's say game modes characters weapons and all that etc so yeah guys this is the way i'm going to be ranking the game modes i am going to be ranking them off of three things Number one is I'm going to be ranking them off of multiplayer versus single player because not every game mode in Mutations is available in single player. And that was because whenever I tried to end up playing some of these game modes, I would end up being greeted with this screen a lot where I just can't find a lobby. And unfortunately, you can't host a lobby by yourself. You must have at least some other person with you. Bots do not count. So if you just don't have people, you can't play some of these game modes at all which is kind of stupid so i had to like actually go without gameplay for some of these because i didn't want to just take gameplay from someone's channel and also the second thing with these two as well that's also kind of finicky some of these game modes are almost identical to each other there are some game modes that are essentially combos of two existing modes there are some that are only just slight like differences between a existing mode already in the game where yeah sure they're technically different modes but the difference is so minuscule in my humble opinion it's not worth classifying it basically in its own category that's where the clumping idea kind of comes from that i've been having in some of my ranking episodes lately and the last thing that I'm basing this off of is whether or not that this has a ability to end up having an increased fun factor if you play with other people. Because some of these game modes were specifically meant with the idea of multiplayer in mind, and if you don't end up having a lot of people or even any people in addition to you and you're playing with just bots or just completely by yourself, it just kind of ends up hampering the gameplay. So. That is kind of like almost recycling back to the very first point about where you need some people just to play the game regardless. Some are just also more fun with other people, so I want to make that clear. But yeah, guys, I know this has been an extremely long intro, but I just wanted to lay the groundwork for all the things that we're going to be ranking here today. So yeah, guys, here we go. Let's rank, finally, after all these months, all the mutations modes in Left 4 Dead. Alrighty guys, so coming in at the very first spot, for what I believe is the worst mutation in all of Left 4 Dead 2, this is going to end up being Shoot Zones. Shoot Zones is the absolute worst game mode in the Mutations playlist for Left 4 Dead 2. Let me explain why. The premise behind this game mode, for those of you that have not played it, the idea is that you end up spawning into a specific campaign chapter, and what happens is, is that you end up having these, uh, these headstones that are in the ground, like these crosses, and you have to stand within that as a perimeter to be able to kill zombies. Now, it's not like it's a wide perimeter. And it's not like that it's going to be like, you know, easy where like the thing moves around. You got a nice big bubble around you. The bots join you. No, no, no. It's not how that works. Basically, the idea is that there's a whole bunch of little individual tombstones that are just as only as big as your character. So you have to be standing exactly inside of these things. Otherwise, it does not let you end up killing the zombies. You can shoot, but the zombies will just not die. They're literally invincible. You have to be within this zone. And on top of that, it's temporary. So what happens is that if you walk around in the map, right, you have to end up going to these little tombstones. You have to stand in them. They're only big enough for one person, mind you. So the bots got to either get their own or you have to hope that they're, you know, just willing to survive long enough for you to be able to defend them because that's normally what happens. 
you have to shoot from this, and you can normally get about, like, three kills before the thing just expires, and you gotta move over to the next one, and you keep going, like, forward, like, a couple steps at a time until you get to the end of the chapter. It's extremely gruelingly long and tedious. It's like, Go up to a tombstone, get like a kill or two, move up forward. Get another kill or two, move up forward. And without people playing this with you, the bots are just never going to basically stand in these things, rendering them useless. They're just extra meat shields, if that makes any sense. I do not like this game mode at all. It's just boring as fuck. It is horrible to play through by yourself. And even if I did play with my buddies, I can imagine we would get very annoyed very fast. Alrighty guys, so these next set of game modes I'm going to be ranking really really quickly basically back to back to back to back because they're all essentially giving me the same issue which is I cannot find a lobby. These game modes are so unpopular that there is just no pre-existing lobbies that I can end up finding. I've tried to find these over the course of several weeks and I just never get lucky. This game mode, or these several game modes rather, are never populated. I can't find them, so that kind of shows you what the community thinks, and that's why I am going to be putting them down here as well, because I, number one, can't find the game modes anymore. They're just so unpopular that I haven't been able to get any new gameplay for them. The last time I played these was a long time ago, so not fresh in my mind. And in addition to that, too, I just never really liked these game modes to begin with. So, back to back to back to back to back, essentially, like, five backs here. We have got Bleed Out Versus... And then I have no idea how the hell you pronounce this, so I'm just going to wing it. Con, uh, Fog? Con, uh, Con Fog? It's, it's C-O-N-F-O-G-L. I have no idea how the hell you pronounce that, but that's the next one. Then we've got Health Apocalypse. And then we've got Follow the Litter and Riding My Survivor. These are all the game modes that I just could not end up getting people to play with me because they're all multiplayer based. And let me explain basically how these work. So... Bleed Out Versus is a variant of Versus that ends up being based off the Bleed Out mode, which we'll talk about later, where the way that Bleed Out works is that you are uh, always dying. So your health is on red, and you got like pain pill health, and you're always ending up having a tick. But this is with Versus on top of that, so people already know you're weak and they're coming for you. Now this game mode with the really funky name that I cannot pronounce, the idea behind this one is that you are playing but with versus rules. So you're playing single player with versus rules. So essentially what happens is that the way that the description reads is that the infected are basically scaled up to be a little bit more difficult because that's how it normally works in versus. So basically it's labeled as the competitive mode for mutations, air quotes, which I don't exactly believe. I think there's definitely a lot harder game modes and a lot more fun competitive game modes that are in Left 4 Dead, but that is how they're treating it. Then, for the next one we've got here, we've got Health Apocalypse, which is basically a no health kit versus. This is kind of, like, annoying that you thought of it. It's been a while, so I'm pretty sure that there's a pressed memory somewhere about how annoying that was. Uh, then, for the next one, we've got Follow the Litter. This is scavenger mode, but however, though, is that scavenger mode where the uh, locations are predetermined and the enemies can just wait for you. I can automatically imagine this as the logic behind Call of Duty Warzone, where it's just everyone knows where the, the game is going to be taking place, so people just pre-camp an area. That sounds like it would be annoying as hell. And then the lastly, we've also got Riding My Survivor, which Riding My Survivor is a Left 4 Dead versus variant where the jockeys are buffed. I do not like the idea of that, but however, though, it is original, so I'm going to be ranking up higher on the list, and that is kind of all my game modes basically back to back to back to back. Now we're going more to the traditional ranking here. Alrighty, guys, next on the list is going to end up being another game mode that is very similar to, uh, you know, shoot zones, where you're basically playing in a sandbox or an indie style game mode within Left 4 Dead, but this one's still a lot better. This is going to end up being just called Simply Dash. Not Simply Dash, it's, it just simply is the word Dash. And the way that this game mode works is that it's really funky. Let me explain. So, you and the survivors are spawned in into the map, and you have a set designated path where you're trying to get to the safe room as normal, and what happens is that there is these, like, firework tubes that you have to go up to, and when you go up to them, they will launch off. Launching them is going to end up revealing the next one, but each time you activate one of these, zombies now start to spawn. The idea is to end up going to all of these designated firework tubes throughout the whole entire chapter until you can end up getting to the end. Now, after I think you believe, I believe you get like four or five, there's going to be one of them on a flagpole. 
and this flagpole has four rocket tubes where you have to end up having every single survivor stand near it to launch a firework. So all your bots have to survive to get every one of these flags, otherwise it just will not work and you're essentially rendered useless so you can be able to complete the whole entire rest of the chapter. It just does not work. There was times that I tried to finish the campaign well, I was just a survivor, and then the other two died, and it wouldn't let me complete it because the flag wouldn't go off because the other survivors did not go near it to launch their fireworks. It's very weird and very niche. I can uh, not imagine people not playing this with their friends. I mean, I did it for the sake of the ranking video. I wanted to go back into it fresh. But yeah, you need to end up having you and your players all collect these fireworks, and then like have everyone reach this one flagpole that has fireworks, so that way it can launch. And you gotta do that a couple of times until you finish the chapter, and then you can end up winning that game mode. Now the thing is though, is you can't cheese this, because what happens is that if you just don't have the like the last flag complete, the safe room door just doesn't exist, the just room is just there without it, so you can't end the round, and you automatically just fail because you're inevitably going to die. So that is where I'm ranking that game mode. I really honestly could care less for it, I don't like it at all really, I mean th I think it's cute, but I really don't need to play it again for a long time to get my fill. Alright, now we've got a very, very interesting game mode, because I've never seen anything like this. This is one of those game modes that is a lot like the last two that we went over, where it's got the custom loading screen, feels like an indie sandbox. But, Holdout is very unique, and I would say it actually could be fun if you play this with friends. The idea behind this is that you are in a chapter of a campaign, it can really be anything. And what you're doing is that the map basically gets a makeover and it looks like it's its own map. It's the exact same map from a previous Left 4 Dead campaign, but there's just so much stuff lying around it now. And the way that this works, it feels almost kind of like a weird version of Gmod, where you're playing this just like fan-created game and have like its own rules. And it doesn't exactly make sense, but it just barely works to the point where it just feels different enough that it's fun. If that makes any sense whatsoever, you would have to play to really truly understand where I'm getting at here. Some of these are made by modders and just feel extremely indie. They don't feel professional at all, they feel very sandboxy, and that's fine. But it just is really a different type of feel. And the premise behind this game mode is that you play on the sandbox, and items around the map are based off of currency. You use currency throughout playing the game to end up buying these items to help you survive. Now, there is a objective. You have a clock that has 10 minutes counting downward, and within the 10 minutes that are counting downward, you will end up getting rescue. But however, though, to get rescue, you have to constantly fill up this generator that's making a spotlight by filling it up with gasoline. Now, if you don't fill it up with gasoline, the timer just stops, and it will stay stuck there. And there's a separate timer that gives you a break or two between rounds where zombies are coming at you constantly versus nothing's happening. So it gives you basically like a, uh, a timeout or time to like re-prepare. And you end up having additional things going on at the same time while this happens. You've got random witches and tanks spawning. You've got different elements where you've got uh, a whole bunch of stuff you can buy. Like there's the grenade boxes. There is a, uh, a pile of like guns you can get out of a hamper area. And this has the very first appearance and only single appearance of a brand new Left 4 Dead equipment that I wish was in the base game. And this is going to end up being the Bouncing Betty. This is a new piece of equipment that is in Left 4 Dead, at least to me. I did not know that until I replayed this game mode. You can pick up and use fully functioning Bouncing Bettys. You will blow up enemies by just leaving these here on the ground just as basically a trap. And these are fun, they are extremely good, they are extremely lethal, and I wish they were in the default game, like in a military map, like, you know, like let's say if you were playing on uh, Blood Harvest or whatever, you can end up finding them, or maybe, for example, if you're playing on the Parish, that would be also really, really cool to find them. They exist in the game, just only in this game mode, and I wish they'd show up in other ways, but however though, still, this is just as enjoyable as having any other brand new piece of thing in the game, which I like. Alrighty guys, now coming in also basically back to back to back to back, this is going to end up being all the Left 4 Dead 1 theme game modes. So, what do I mean by the Left 4 Dead 1 theme game modes? So, basically what these are is a compilation of all the Left 4 Dead 1 themed, like, modes from the past. Like, it is literally Left 4 Dead 1 version of Versus, Survival, and Campaign. There's no Jockey, there's no Charger, there's no Spitter. You are playing as the Left 4 Dead 1 crew, and you get only Left 4 Dead 1 guns. So that would be something like, for example, you get like the hunting rifle, the main model shotgun, the M16, 
and there's no like AK-47 military sniper rifle or MP5. The, the Left 4 Dead 2 guns just don't exist. So this is cool how you can play essentially Left 4 Dead 1 in Left 4 Dead 2. You literally just get all the previous game modes. Now, unfortunately, it is limited to multiplayer only. You cannot play this in single player. And there's nothing stopping you from playing Left 4 Dead 1, you know, maps and stuff like that in single player with Left 4 Dead 1 stuff. But you gotta deal with the Left 4 Dead 2 Special Infected and all that. And it makes it so that way the game is not a full-on replica, but it's still better than nothing. Left 4 Dead 2 basically is Left 4 Dead 1 already. So there really was no point in adding in these game modes, but I understand why they add them. They're for the classic OG purists that want the game to be as, you know, original as possible, where there's only Left 4 Dead 1 guns, only Left 4 Dead 1 Special Infected, only Left 4 Dead 1 Survivors and Maps and all that, sh uh, you know, shtick. But, uh, yeah, it's okay. I respect it. I'm glad it exists. It's good that it has the fan service, but it is honestly not needed, so it's going to be only ranking up so high on this list. All right, now we've got a really interesting game mode because this is very uh, nerdy, as I would say. I can totally imagine somebody playing this game mode being like, oh yes, now I can understand all my statistics and how uh, efficient I'm being at my gameplay. The idea behind this game mode, guys, and if you're wondering what the name is, I'll also explain. This is going to be Gunbrain. The whole entire logic behind this is that the game is auto-adjusting to how you're playing and giving you statistics based off of it. That's, that's basically all. That's the gist of it. You can end up looking at the console commands, and you can look at your statistics of how you're performing live in-game in at the exact moment that you're doing it. It's really dorky, and I can see this being used by essentially only the people that are absolutely numbers guys. I cannot imagine anybody that is remotely casual whatsoever playing this and being like, Oh yeah, I can't wait to check out my stats. Alright guys, now this is where we start to get into the more, uh, I would say, higher quality modes. Now we have got Lone Gunman. The premise behind Lone Gunman is this, guys. You are playing by yourself, and you just have only your Magnum with you. Now, they treat it very, very, very hardcore. The zombies on this game mode will treat you at expert difficulty, where if they hit you, you automatically are going to get a lot of your health taken away. Like, 10 plus damage is going to be dealt to you. And I would say that this is a pretty hard game mode. It is probably one of, if not one of the like top three hardest mutations game modes in all of Left 4 Dead because you're playing by yourself on essentially expert difficulty with just a pistol. That is literally as hardcore as you can get. The only thing I can imagine that would make this even harder is if you had melee weapons only, but then again though you probably wouldn't be able to kill like a majority of the special infected. But anyways, my point has been made. So the way I look at this game mode is that it's made for the uh, majority of the tryhard community or the minority of the main Left 4 Dead community, if you will, because a majority of the casuals I can't see playing this game mode realistically. Like, legitimately, I played it and I got uh, my fix within a matter of, like, 20 minutes. It, it was it was very, very fast. I don't need to ever play it again, honestly, to feel fulfilled, and it was just a, pretty good as just honestly a one-off for the sake of the series again. Alright guys, now we've got room for one. This would be really fun if you play with your friends. Or at least, if not friends, randoms. Because the whole entire premise behind this is that it's one man escapes out alive. You play on a finale of any Left 4 Dead 2 or 1 map, and what you're doing is that you go throughout the whole entire finale as a team, but the moment that the rescue is available, only one of you is allowed to leave. This can be in any sense of the word. This can be in the scavenger finales, this can be in the camping finales, the rushing finales, whatever have you. One of you is going to escape and the other three are not going to make it. And that is, makes it really a fun concept if you're playing with your buddies. If you get along well with your friends or the randoms that you're playing with, and you obviously know that it's just a joke and it's for fun, it's for gags, then this can be very addictive and it's just great to just mess around and have fun on because you're all like tryharding and screwing with each other to see who is the last man standing or in this rather in this case escaping and it's fun i played this by myself and i played it only with the bots but even though i did play with the bots i still had a lot of fun with it but i can definitely imagine this being a lot more fun with friends if i ever played this with you guys like for an open lobby i can see that being also a lot of fun maybe that's what we might do for our next open lobby but yeah, guys, this game mode is really fun if you end up playing in a certain niche scenario, but if you can't play in the niche scenario, it will still suffice regardless. Alright, now we are down to headshots. This is going to end up being a game mode that's themed around the zombies being only being able to die via headshots, which is one of the uh, hardcore modes kind of yet again, I would say. You're essentially playing this like realistic style 
where the zombies will only die if you shoot them in the brain. This is like the Walking Dead game mode, as I like to call it, because zombies in the Walking Dead universe only die if you destroy the brain. And playing in Left 4 Dead with Walking Dead rules makes this feel more genuine, and I feel like this is the closest you can get to hardcore without making it, like, way over the top. Lone Gunman, I feel like, is a very niche scenario where you're literally, like, a veteran survivor that's barely getting by on, like, his whim and his just pure, like, will to live. But this, just having headshots only, is more just realistic. It's just more zombie feeling. I mean, I understand that's fiction, but I like to have some realism with my fiction, a healthy balance. And if it's just saying, hey, headshots only, you know, take it or leave it, I'll take it. Yeah, I mean, it's as simple as that. <laughs> now we have Chainsaw Massacre. This is one of my personal favorites, and I'm glad I got to play this again. Chainsaw Massacre, guys, is as literally as simple as it can get. Good old fashioned gore and chainsaw madness. This is fun. You end up getting just nothing but a unlimited chainsaw and you just go at it. Everyone gets a chainsaw, including the bots, and it's just a great hack and slash simulator. This is the definition of a horror game right here. You go up against the zombies with a chainsaw and your wit, and it is just blood and guts everywhere, and it's so much fun. This is like the ideal guys mode where it's just like, hell yeah, blood and guts, gore, yeah, woo, Murka. But, uh, yeah, the game mode, that's that's the whole entire appeal behind it. It's a hack and slash, get by, uh, you know, with your chainsaw and your, your, your will to live. And I like that. It makes it fun for the gameplay. It makes it fun for just something to do that's different. And it very much fits the vibe of Left 4 Dead. So, because of that, that's why I am ranking it higher up on the list. And I think that it honestly could deserve to be up higher. But there's just so many better game modes that are on the list that I have to just put it where it is. But if it was the only game mode and the other ones that are up higher didn't exist, then of course we all know that this would be like one of the best. Alright, now we've got the Four Swordsmen game mode. Four Swordsmen is basically like Chainsaw Massacre, except that everyone gets Samurai Swords. Now, I rank this higher because of one main reason. It's not necessarily a pet peeve, but it's my inner tryhard kicking in. And that's because the chainsaw, when it comes to that, it's annoying how that every single time that you have to switch between a uh, healing item or a throwable item, you have to re-start like start up the chainsaw. You gotta do that, you know, that pulling the, the little uh, string animation, and that just gets annoying after a while, especially when you're in a pinch and you're trying to survive, because then you gotta resort to smacking, and Left 4 Dead 2, there is no unlimited smack. So, your whole entire appeal of the, the unlimited game mode of meleeing is gone, and I like Four Swordsmen better because you're constantly able to just swing and then melee with your fist at your heart's content whenever you want, rather than having to, it's like, oh, all of a sudden I gotta reload my chainsaw. <laughs> like, you don't have to do that with a sword. There's no unnecessary animations with the sword, and that just makes it so that way I can live just a little bit longer, therefore making it much more fun. All right, now we've got flu season, or in this case, 2020 the game mode, because the idea behind this, guys, is that is nothing but boomers and spitters Trying to poke fun at the idea that everyone is basically all disgusting, so everyone ends up becoming these gross monstrosities, which, you know, 2020, with all the illness and everything, I can make so many different jokes, but I will save my channel the strike. So yeah, guys, flu season, it's just spitters and boomers. It's all the uh, nastier zombies, the ones that are, you know, disgusting, spit and vomits being flung at you from everywhere, and you just gotta pick your poison. Now, this game mode is not exactly hard. It's just more, uh, you know, just kind of unique. It's not exactly tedious either. It, it, it really, all it is, is that it's just a mix-up of the Left 4 Dead gameplay. I feel that tedious really only applies to the game modes that are difficult unnecessarily. There's just flat-out difficult, but then there's difficult with no reason behind it, and that's what I would like to label as tedious. And this isn't exactly difficult at all, regardless of whether or not it is tedious. It, it just isn't tedious or difficult, it's just unique. And by that I mean unique, I mean that it's fun and it's just very different in terms of how you would normally play Left 4 Dead. You only end up having two special infected, and they're not exactly the most threatening. They're kind of the two weaker of the, the bunch from the rest of the main special infected, but when they're together and there's plentiful amounts of them just all around you 24-7, where a boomer can blind you and then like three spitters can basically trap you in a acid trap, you can die pretty damn fast. So I like this, and I would say it's definitely deserving of being higher up on the list. Now we've got Last Man on Earth. This is the hardcore game mode that I like. All you're doing, guys, is playing Left 4 Dead by yourself. You can end up using whatever you want, however you want it, 
but you only can play by yourself. You have no bots, and you are literally the last man on Earth. You have to end up going throughout the whole entire campaign by yourself, which means if you end up getting grabbed, pounced, or beaten to death, the whole entire thing is going to reset. Now, it's only special infect you gotta go up against, so there's no common infected to screw you up. But that does mean, though, that means every single time that you end up running into a zombie, your life will be in danger. You can end up having a smoker be at range, and you might only have a shotgun where you can't quite reach. You might end up having it where a tank's coming at you, and you're trapped in a corner. You might end up having it where you accidentally piss off the witch, and you gotta hope that she dies before she can get to you. It is a lot of fun. I really do like this, and if I want to pick a try-hard game mode to play, this is the one I'm going to go to. Let me know what your favorite one's going to be at the end, and also, by the end of the video, let me know, guys, what is your own personal favorite game modes in all mutations? Do you have your own list of your own, or do you end up having your uh, favorites that you would just like to say, I like this one the most and this one the least? Let me know. Now we have got Heart 8. Heart 8 is cool because it, it implies the idea that all the special infected are just waiting to get you. Now, the special infected usually end up appearing in like maybe one, maybe two, sometimes three uh, pairs at a time. But this ends up making it so that way all of them, except for the tank and then the witch, because it's kind of hard to, to do that. But pretty much all the special infected will come at you at once. So the Spitter, the Jockey, the Hunter, the Boomer, all those guys, they will come at you essentially seconds of each other. And it makes it like almost like a coordinated attack on versus logic where like all of them try to team up to you know get you at once. And if you're not careful, you can end up being surrounded by these wombo combos of special infecteds that can end up screwing you. Especially if there's a witch or a tank involved. Because when you have the witch and the tank involved, and you got the other special infected, like the smoker, jockey, the hunter, and all that coming at you. It can make it very difficult very fast, which is fun though, because there's some times where it's like extremely calm and you feel like this is the easiest thing ever. And then there's some other times where it's just like, oh God, half my team is dead. I have no first aid kit and I have got zero bullets. Fuck me. <laughs> that, that's exactly what happened in my previous experience, by the way. That's why I use that reference. All right, hunting party's up next. Now, hunting party is just only hunters. You end up going against only them. You do have tanks and witches, though, which is slightly, uh, you know, kind of a buzzkill. But, however, though, the predominant special infected that you're going up against is just going to be only the hunter. So there is no spitter, no jockey, no nothing. The hunter is going to be coming at you in singles and also in groups. So if you're not careful, you might end up being pounced on by a dude in a hoodie in a back alley. Yes, I did that joke on purpose. But uh, yeah, this game mode is fun. I enjoyed it. I got a lot of big funny moments out of it because there's just something appealing to end up having it where it's just completely silent and then you just hear that growl and then out of nowhere you hear a giant scream and then you're just like, oh crap, things got real. Now we have got Jib Fest. Jib Fest is fun. This is a game mode that you can just literally screw around in and be completely reckless. And it's really nice to have a change of pace for Left 4 Dead where you can just not care and just go balls to the wall. That's Jib Fest. Jib Fest is you and your team getting unlimited ammoed M60s, and you can just spray and pray to your heart's content. There's nothing stopping you from just holding down that trigger and just walking forward and basically trying to be like the Expendables. <laughs> Which, if you guys have ever remember that one scene from the second movie where there's the one dude that ends up pulling with the AA-12 shotgun and he ends up just mowing down all the enemies, that's exactly what this game reminds me of. And I do enjoy that type of mentality going into this. It makes it very, very fun, very, very chaotic. But, however, though, the trade-off is just so worth it, man. It is so fun. Alrighty, guys. I told you we'd get back to this game mode eventually, and here it is. So, we're now on to Bleed Out. So, Bleed Out, the idea behind this, and I'm going to just reiterate it again, even though I mentioned it earlier, is that you are always dying, essentially, in this game mode. You are on Pain Pill Health, and you are in the red by default. And your health is ever so slowly ticking down until it inevitably reaches zero. So, you got to keep finding Pain Pills around the map to be able to keep your health up. Because if you don't, you will end up going down and then therefore die. This applies to everyone in the lobby. So you also need to share two as well. So if you get incapacitated or you end up getting really low on HP, you better once again find some health pretty damn quick. Otherwise, you're going to just once again go straight back to going down. And that's going to be a problem very, very fast. I don't know. I never did actually pay attention if it would just auto kill you if you ran out of your HP. But uh, it I wouldn't surprise me if it is completely just pain pill health and eventually it all goes away and then you just collapse. But uh, yeah, the pain pills are your savior in this game mode, and you really just want to make sure that you are using them all the time. So become like your friendly neighborhood drug addict, like Lewis, and get those pain pills. 
Alright, now that I've had some time to calm down from my rage in the previous mutations video, let's rank Special Delivery, guys. So, Special Delivery. This should be fresh in your minds, especially because of the rage that I ended up portraying in the video. So, Special Delivery. This game mode is making it so that way it's similar to Hard 8, where it's a whole bunch of the Special Infected coming at you at once. However, though, the big difference is there is no spawn delay. There is no spawn cap, there is no spawn anything restricting the infected whatsoever. So all the infected, if they so choose to, they can come at you however they want, however many they want, and whenever they want, at their heart's content. And that can get really annoying very fast, you know, hence the video. And I would say, regardless of the rage, this game mode is still really, really fun. It's one of those things that I get annoyed, yes, but I have just as much fun playing as I get annoyed by it. You know you have a good game, when even if it's annoying, it's still just as fun as it is annoying. If it's just solely annoying, that's when you got an issue. But if it's fun and annoying, I can deal with it. This game mode is that. It's sometimes annoying, but it's majority of the time fun. I enjoy having all the special infected basically just being spammed at me at once, and I like being tested. I enjoy the idea behind going, you know, balls to the wall and just trying to tell the infected, hey, I'm not going to back down 1v1 me, bro, or rather 1v8 me, bro, and I will just end up killing them all. It can be very fun with friends also too as well, and the good news is you don't need to play online, which I'm very glad because with the game modes being online only sometimes and being like, hey, you can't play this whatsoever now, it really makes me appreciate online services and online games because... Inevitably, they do shut down, which is why, ever since I've got video games that have been able to have a live feature, I play the single player later, because I know I can always go back to that. I just really am just not looking forward to the day when the Xbox 360 server shut down, because that means that Left 4 Dead 1 and 2 will also go on there, and I know that a lot of you guys are on there too, and I have a lot of great memories on there as well. But uh, hopefully that day will not come soon, hopefully that will still be a long ways away, but uh, yeah, it makes you really appreciate online gaming, doesn't it? Alright, now we have got Nightmare. Nightmare was one of the game modes that we ended up playing last in line at the end of the Mutation series, and Nightmare was fun. Nightmare was really cool because it was based off of one of my favorite game modes, which is Survival. And I like Nightmare because it puts a, a Left 4 Dead 1 aura around uh, Survival mode, is that you are playing with fog everywhere, the Special Infected can come at you extremely easily that way, and it's basically overall, like, as the title in my previous video about Nightmare suggests, it's basically just hardcore survival. It is a very difficult mode if you're not experienced, and it can be very, very tedious. But however, though, once you get past the learning curve, which can be relatively quick, it's, it's fun. It really is fun. It's almost addictive. I like the premise of survival as a game mode already as it is, but with the extra flavor of just being able to end up having it be even more difficult and spooky almost like that makes it fun makes left 4 dead scary again because i'll be playing and all of a sudden i'll get jump scared by a hunter that popped out of the smoke that I wasn't expecting i'm like oh shit so it just gets very fun and it's just fun to mess around with your buddies all right now we've got iron man i know i'm not talking about the superhero this is going to end up being the mutation for it iron man is what i like to call basically the back for blood mode because iron man ends up having the premise of back for blood where what happens is that you only end up getting one shot at surviving and what happens is that if you die the whole entire thing is going to reset if you end up completing the whole entire campaign good for you you completed iron man but however though if you are one of those un unfortunate people where you end up dying and you go down and you lose the round you start the whole entire thing over again from the very beginning so if you're playing a long campaign and you're playing it on a tedious version like let's say expert in fact they even challenge you they they poke fun at the idea of being like oh we bet you can't beat this on expert because expert already is tough as it is but trying to do this where you get one shot at it otherwise the whole entire campaign is gonna reset from the very beginning and you can be at any point even the very very like tip of the like virgil's boat and you could still die and reset all again that makes it very intense, but because it's that intense, makes it one of the most rewarding game modes to play. If you were to complete this, and you end up getting it, it's really, really rewarding saying, hey, I survived the whole entire thing from start to finish without messing up. That's a big achievement. That's something to be proud of, and as the game mode scales, and you end up playing something like, let's say, advanced mode or even expert mode, it's especially a challenge. But if you play this by yourself or with your buddies, regardless of who, how you're doing it or who you're doing it with, it's still a fun challenge. 
And I give props to anybody that just completes this game mode in general because it's a good thing to end up doing. It shows that you're a veteran and you earn my respect if you end up completing this. Alright, now we have got Death Store. So Death Store is essentially the same thing as Iron Man, but however though, the idea is that it's slightly easier. So I'm ranking up only a little bit higher just because of that premise. Now I know that might sound like a very uh, scumbag thing to do, being like, oh, well you're putting the easier game mode up. Well, well, like, I mean, realistically guys, I mean, yes, I mean, I understand that that might seem the case, but let's be honest, we all wish that things were easier, don't we? And I also enjoy the you know game for the fun aspect rather than just necessarily the tryharding aspect too. So you know, uh, tough poop. Anyway, uh, so the idea is behind this is that, yes, it's easier, that's why I'm ranking up higher, and plus also, therefore, it makes it more casual, hence the fun factor. This is kind of like a less hardcore version of Iron Man, where if you end up going down, you die, and therefore you essentially restart the chapter. That is, at least if you're playing solo, you would have to wait for all your buddies to die if you're playing this with uh, people. But yeah, so with Iron Man, the idea is that, like, let's say that you were playing and you end up dying, or your whole entire team ends up dying. The whole campaign resets. That store is a little bit more forgiving, where if you end up going down, you will die, which, therefore, if you're playing with yourself, that also sounded bad, uh, let me rephrase that. <laughs> if you're playing by yourself, and you end up dying, because, you know, you end up getting insta-killed when you end up getting knocked, the chapter will reset, or if you're playing with your buddies, they all will end up dying if they all get knocked with you, and then therefore the chapter will reset. So it's like easy Iron Man, but because of that, I just make it up higher. I, I, I like my fair amount of tryharding, don't get me wrong, but I do like having a lot of fun in my game modes, and that comes from game modes being easy. I mean, let's be honest, everyone wished things were slightly easy. Now, I don't know if you necessarily would rank this as high as me personally, but I want to put this up higher because I really do like this. This is going to end up being a Healing Gnome slash Gnome Alone. Both of these I'm putting basically back to back because they're a, a fun concept, if you will. The idea behind Healing Gnome and Gnome Alone is that you're both in this game mode trying to end up taking Gnome Chonsky throughout the whole entire campaign with you. The only difference between Gnome Alone, though, and Healing Gnome is that the Gnome itself and Healing Gnome will actually be your med kit or your pain pills and heal you and you have to share with your buddies. So when you pick up Noam Chomsky, he ends up giving you pain pill health that will slowly tick back up. And if you're not holding him, your health will actually tick back down, kind of like bleed out. And that makes it where you have to really, really be careful with this doll. You gotta make sure that you have him with you 24 seven, because if you don't have him, you're screwed. You will end up getting killed a lot faster than you may uh, be expecting. And the premise behind this, I would rank up higher than I would say uh, Gnome Alone. Gnome Alone, that one is just, you have to just bring Nomchonsky with you, which is kind of like a repeat of Dark Carnival's premise, but you can do it on any game mode uh, of any, you know, map, which, eh, I mean, it, it's kind of like the same thing, but I would feel like that the fact that he heals you makes it a little bit more special, so I'm going to be ranking that up a little bit higher. But yeah, I have a, a, a like, a, a emotional attachment behind the achievement of where you end up trying to rescue Nomchonsky from Dark Carnival, because it was one of my biggest achievements back in the day when I was a teenager. And it was like one of my happiest memories for me. So that's why I kind of rank these up here is for the sake of nostalgia. But I do end up putting the healing gnome version up higher just because I like the premise a little bit better, to be honest. Alrighty, guys, we're down to the top three. And who would think that the two brand new mutations modes from the last stand update would actually get here? It's so cool when brand new content is almost considered the best content. Because very rarely in games nowadays do we end up having just things that are brand newly released automatically become the best thing. Some people just can't let go of the classics, but I enjoy the fact that we end up getting these new things being so fun. So let's talk about it. So the next game mode, guys, is going to end up being Rocket Dude. Rocket Dude is fun. Rocket Dude is literally just the definition of, uh, like, Left 4 Dead if it had cheats. And that's fun. You play with a grenade launcher and you have moon gravity. And you can use the grenade launcher to fling yourself. It is like the uh, the, the the rocket glitch, if you will. <laughs> because that's basically what this is. It's basically a game mode based off of the grenade launcher glitch. Where you could corpse launch people with the, uh, the thumper. I really do like this game mode because it feels like that if Mario and uh, Left 4 Dead 2 ended up having a baby. Because of the fact that you can basically just super jump and have all the cool power-ups and everything. Especially since they're mushrooms. But uh, yeah. I overall really like this, so shout out to the mapper and shout out to everyone that worked on the last stand update because your brand new game modes guys are in, in the spots of like being the top three and that just, that is awesome. Thank you for making such great game modes.
All right, guys, number two, we have got Tank Run. Tank Run is really fun. Idea is just, just like, that's that's fun just by itself. Take my money, I am sold. I would buy Left 4 Dead just to play that game mode if I, you know, was already bored of the, the default campaigns and all that stuff. This game mode is by all time one of the best. It is one of, if not the best amongst some people because other than the last spot for number one, I would say this is probably the second most current popular game mode in mutations at the given moment in time for Left 4 Dead. Who wouldn't want to be the survivors and be running away from four tanks at a given moment in time chasing you? That's just fun. It's pure chaos and it's just a whole bunch of just fun just amongst your buddies with amongst randoms. And it's just pure and utter, just, just, just order, it's order going wrong and dysfunction happening with like with a breeze. It is amazing. I enjoy it. And because of that, like, that's why I got to rank it up higher. But however, guys, there is one more game mode left. Alrighty, guys, coming in at number one, this is going to end up being tank mode, or as it's properly called, tank mode, <laughs> which is going to end up basically being almost essentially the exact same thing as tank run. But you can also play as the tanks, so it's going to be eight players in this lobby. You all take turns going back and forth, being overpowered, and just running for your lives. This game mode has been one of my favorite game modes for years, because other than uh, survival, other than versus, other than the default campaign, I always find sometime every couple of months, every couple of years at the very least, to go back and play this mode if it's populated. I get so excited when I can get a lobby of this when I really want to play it because it's just pure memories for me. I played this so much back in the day on the Xbox 360, and in fact, one of my memories that uh, I actually remember pretty fondly was actually playing with my buddies a lot, where we would end up just playing, going back and forth, just taking turns, being the tank and being the survivors and just trying to kill each other. And it would just be a mixture of like just a whole bunch of teenagers just screaming their heads off, being like, Oh God! And like we would basically like have like these moments of just pure joy, pure messing around, and just this complete innocent vibe of just having fun playing video games. And I can't really stress enough that how much I miss that so, so much. I really do miss when this game mode was fresh in my mind and it was brand new to me, because it was brand new, it was at the peak. I still enjoy it as an adult, but oh my god, the memories that I had when I played as a kid, those are irreplaceable. I will never forget those. And that is why, at the end of the day, guys, this is my all-time favorite mutations mode in all of Left 4 Dead 2. But yeah, guys, that is going to be it here for today's video. I truly hope you guys end up enjoying the Left 4 Dead 2 Mutation series and the ranking of all the mutations that are in Left 4 Dead. If you guys did, please consider dropping a like, comment, and subscribe to support the channel. I am forever appreciative of you guys. I'm forever in your debt. Thank you guys so much for the support on the channel over the last year. It has been absolutely remarkable, and I can't wait to see what we do for year two, guys. I'm very much looking forward to the rest of the year. But yeah, guys, I hope you end up enjoying today's video. Before we do wrap things up, though, I just want to say, once again, if you guys enjoyed, please drop a like, comment, and subscribe. If you guys want to keep up to date with me, I have all my social medias linked down below in the description. And if you guys could also please use code BLACKNINJA797 in all caps in the Fortnite and Epic Games item shops to support the channel. That'd be very much appreciated. But I hope you guys end up enjoying today's video. And if you did, once again, one last time, please leave a like comment and subscribe and i hope you enjoyed another youtube video guys from the most unique youtuber you guys are ever going to see thank you for watching guys and peace out